Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Uh, today I would like to tell, tell you about this number here, or rather this polynomial in C. So uh, there is a huge constant involved. Well, it's maybe not so huge, but effectively it's some nice 11th power of C. Whatever C is, whatever the number is, uh, we'll see. So the question, um, and this number plays a crucial role here, is the following. So in knot theory, you are interested in shadows of the knots, the knot diagrams, I call them knot shadows, whatever. So the projections to, this, to the plane, where you remember which crossing goes over and which crossing goes under. And there is a famous theorem, which is called the Reitermeister theorem, which tells you that, well, plus isotopies, which I don't need in this video. So this is an example of an isotopy. So these three moves are sufficient to describe the equivalence class of, uh, well, uh, or knots represented by the same shadow. So they're called the Reitermeister one, two, and three moves. So Reitermeister one is kind of this unkinky move. Um, Reitermeister two is kind of this move. And a right master three is actually not much more complicated, but it's a bit hard to illustrate with two hands because it uses three strands. Um, forgive me. <laughs> anyway, so the right master theorem that tells you the two shadows present the same knot, if and only if they're related by the corresponding uh, right master moves and the isotopies, which don't play actually any role in this video. Um, and this is how it looks like. So here, the left handed version of the figure eight knot and the right handed version of the figure eight knot related by a sequence of right master moves indicating which one is actually which here. So two, three, two, two, two and three, two and three, one. So here, for example, getting rid of this little kink here is one and the rest is engine isotopy. Um, and you can relate all different projections of the figure eight knot and any knot in general using the right master moves, but which is not answered by the right master theorem when which is kind of the question uh, for today is how many Reitermeister moves do we actually need? So let's say we have fixed this shadow and we know that we want to go to this shadow and there should be some way of getting hold of the number of necessarily moves, necessary moves to go from one side to the other. Turns out that this is a really, really hard question. Uh, so we need to definitely restrict to a simpler subclass of questions. And it's still very, very, very hard. And process, uh, well, progress was done very, very recently, actually. And we'll see, actually. That's, that's in the end, this will be this number. Uh, spoiler, spoiler. Um, anyway, so res we restrict, actually, to uh, two shadows. So uh, and, and the unknot shadow, kind of the trivial shadow of the unknot, which is just a circle, and any other, and the other shadow, whatever, this is a really bad example anyway, but the other one will have C crossings. And we are asking for whether we can kind of rent down a bound going from uh, the non-trivial shadow to the trivial shadow, a bound of Reitermeister moves. And this is far from being obvious because there are so crazy shadows, embeddings, uh, projections of the unknot. So here is one. And if you stare on this one for a while, you might see that this is actually the unknot. But um, I'm not a topologist here. I'm not a topologist enough, or I'm really not good in three dimensional whatever ge geometry. I can't see that this is the unknot. It is the unknot. And here's a sequence of moves that actually undoes it until it's just really the unknot. And that's a huge problem. So in this case, if I haven't miscounted, we could go through it in a second. Uh, there should be 10 right by moves, and there are also 10 crossings in this case. Uh, anyway, so for example, here, you take this strand here and you pull it over, um, as you can see here. So this would be one. And then you can take this strand here and this strand here and do a right by step three move until they sit like this, which are two moves and you continue uh, along the same lines and indicated moves here. And hopefully if I have miscounted, you should get 10 of them. But the point is they're so crazy uh, and not diagrams and it's absolutely not clear whether you can write down any nice bound for the number of right and master moves needed. Um, even this restriction of the question from before, so how many randomized moves do we need to undo a, a given shadow of the unknot, even this question doesn't have any, uh, I don't know, it, it looks pretty hopeless to me. In particular, if you know 
uh, these kind of diagrams, so this one was already example here, but they exist in any for, for any number of crossings. So this is still the unknot, and I really never tried to undo it using Weidemeister moves. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, not really. I, I don't want to. No, not really. So these guys are called demons, uh, demon knots, whatever. Some people call them hard knots or whatever, whatever you want to call them. So they are really hard diagrams of the unknot in the sense that you definitely need to make them more complicated before you can simplify them down to the unknot. So if you start here with C crossings, you need to get to C prime crossings before you can actually uh, simplify it. And it's, it's not even said that it goes up and down. It could, could go like this. Um, whatever, and, and eventually you hit hit the, the trivial one. So this is a really, really hard question. And because it exists for any C, you in fact need a lot of Reitermeister moves uh, to undo such knots. And it's, it's, it's just, it looks to me like there's absolutely no way, there's no hope to get any bound um, for the number of uh, Reitermeister moves needed in general, because you can somehow always write down a really, really crazy diagram of uh, the unknot in this case. Okay, but turns out, and this is really a breakthrough in my opinion, um, that there is, and it's this number actually. So any shadow of the unknot with C crossings, even this beast here, I, I haven't counted the number of crossings, okay? But even this beast here can be undone using at most this number of Reitermeister moves, which is definitely a polynomial in the number of crossings. That's extremely surprising. I mean, first of all, you can write down the solution. That's already ridiculous, but it's a polynomial in the number of crossings, which I personally find extremely surprising. I mean, something like two to the number of crossings, maybe. Um, I would have expected something like this, but no, it's a polynomial. It's an 11 degree polynomial. I have no idea where 11 comes from. An 11 degree polynomial in the number of crossings. Um, I'm not saying this is anywhere near to be optimal. There's probably uh, still a lot to tweak. So this guy needs 10 random master moves if I haven't miscounted. Maybe it's nine, maybe it's 11. It doesn't really matter. Compared to the number um, given by the bound, it, it really doesn't matter at all, actually. Uh, <laughs> whatever. So the number by the bound is given by the bound is this one here. So there might be still room to play around with, but maybe actually not, I don't know, because you also have these extremely complicated diagrams and God knows how many moves you need. And the theorem, which I, is linked in a very nice paper in the description, so the, not the theorem is linked, the, the paper is linked in the description, um, is actually better. So you can say something about uh, not just unknots, but also uh, unlinks, how many moves you need, and the paper gives bound, bounds, so in this case, 7c squared for the number, so the, the most complicated diagram in this picture that appears will be 7, well, uh, easier than, than this one here. So the peak here will be always easier than uh, 7c squared, which is again, a actually pretty small polynomial in C, which I also find very surprising. So an extremely, I, I think an extremely cool breakthrough from 2015-ish, so it's fairly recent. And uh, the, the unknotting question is still not solved. So it doesn't say too much about the complexity class, for example, of unknotting, but it's still a pretty cool theorem in the end. Um, and an upshot, for example, is that testing unknottedness can at least be done in exponential time. Basically, you just need to go through all possible randomizer moves. You know that the maximum number is restricted by a polynomial and piecing that together, you can then testing unknottedness in exponential time in the number of crossings, um, which is, I mean, unknotting problems are really, really hard. So this is, this is a really extremely good result, I personally feel. Um, and it's really, really complicated. So not much is actually known about it in general. So the complexity classes and all of that, um, it was shown before the paper I was mentioning, also linked in the description, that you at ne least need this number of moves as an upper bound. So um, if this number seems to be too big, maybe it is actually, as you can see here, much bigger than 10 for sure. Um, you, you can show you could construct families where you need at least this number of moves. So this is kind of the lowest possible upper bound. Probably the real answer is somewhere in between. So let's say this is C squared and the other one was C to 11. Probably the real answer is somewhere in between, but I can't really tell you where. Um, God knows. And um, yeah, so the problem is that always is there are hard enough unknots for B enough C. So there are zillions of these hard unknots. So this is again 
a picture of the I'm not good luck trying to undo it. Um, anyway, and really not much is known about this problem. This is a really hard problem. Um, so, for example, extremely recently, so this video is in 2022, the paper here is roughly from 2021. It was proven that a unknotting is co-NP, whatever that means, um, some form of complexity class NP, um, but not much more is actually known. And yeah, so this is a really hard problem. A lot of research is going in this direction. And I'm really happy that I found this actually paper, which I wasn't aware of before, which gives this extremely great bound on um, the necessary random master moves, which I personally found uh, that's kind of impossible. Or if it's possible, then it probably will give you some crazy exponential bound. But it actually is a polynomial. It's a degree 11 polynomial in C, which is a pretty cool result, actually. I hope you like it. I also hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.